friend of mine is a retired federal narcotics investigator and mainly worked undercover, so he had to do work all over the world and in some nasty, nasty places. And he's been listening to some of the details about the situation in Mali at a, at a great, you know, it's at a Western hotel. It's not the best Western, that's a chain, but it's at a, it's at a Western hotel taking place in Mali. And uh, he writes, and he has this to say, I've got it here somewhere in my, uh, my text. He says, who in their right mind would go to that blank hole? And why would Radisson put a hotel there? Have, have you ever been on the African continent? It's a whole lot of sand and clay dirt. <laughs> Unfortunately, some really bad things are, are going on there this morning. And once again, you can thank the religion of peace. I want to speak about that in a moment. In fact, Ben Carson uh, getting ripped by the media again because apparently Dr. Carson uh, is now comparing, according to what the media says, he's comparing people who are Muslims to dogs. I guess that's better than pigs. They wouldn't like that for sure. But why don't we take a listen in a moment to what Carson really had to say. First, though, I want to tell you, coming up on our program next Wednesday morning, between 8.30 and 9 o'clock, we are going to be joined in studio likely by Russell Singleton or perhaps Dr. Jonathan Tripp from Tripp Family Medicine right here in Twin Falls, Idaho, talking about carcinogens. Now, those are things that are very dangerous. We're talking toxic, poison, and many of these are cancer-causing. And we'll talk about how perhaps you can best avoid some of those That'll take place between 8.30 and 9 o'clock. We get together with the medical professionals from Trip Family Medicine every Wednesday morning during that time slot. You also have an opportunity to call in if you've got a question or comment, and you have a chance to have a medical professional give you an answer and perhaps direct you in the right direction. Trip Family Medicine is located on Fillmore Street in Twin Falls. And remember, life's too short not to feel good. Maybe to be more direct, it's located on Fillmore Street directly across from the main post office. Ben Carson was being asked at a news conference. He's opposed to, uh, he at least wants a suspension of the refugee program, especially the one involving Syrians for the time being, like many other Republicans. This is making media very angry. And they weren't happy when Carson made an analogy about a rabid dog in trying to explain why he's concerned. We must balance safety against just being a humanitarian. For instance... You know, if there's a a rabbit dog running around in your neighborhood, you're probably not going to assume something good about that dog, and you're probably going to put your children out of the way. How dare he? He just called Muslims dogs. Worse yet, he called them rabbit dogs. How dare he? Doesn't he know that there's a billion of them around the world? What does he do? Think there's some uh, subhuman? Well, he went on to uh, to actually explain a bit more about what he was talking about. He's making, as I said, a simple analogy. doesn't mean that you hate all dogs by any stretch of the imagination, but you're putting your intellect into motion, and you're thinking, how do I protect my children? At the same time, I love dogs, and I'm going to call the Humane Society, and hopefully they can come take this dog away. Uh, or you call the Army, and it comes out and shoots it. <laughs> That's how you deal with terrorists. You don't sit there and say, well, you know, maybe they need a jobs program. They've already been burning people and beheading people and drowning people and they're chopping people's hands off. They've been raping women, you know, uh, mutilating their wives and their daughters and their sisters. I don't think I want to talk to them about a jobs program. I, I think instead there's a better, uh, better way to do this. And, and as a friend of mine said, he's been a frequent guest on the program. In fact, Lieutenant Colonel Steve Heil joined us just a couple of weeks ago. He had a post the other day. He has a a blog, and he was writing. He said uh, the title was, The Only Good Terrorist is a Dead Terrorist. That may hurt some people's feelings, but that's the nature of terrorism. They want to come and hurt you. Well, a natural response to that is self-defense. And perhaps the best self-defense in that situation is to eliminate the target altogether. Not to maim the target, wound the target, or try to negotiate with the target. Wesley Pruden writing at the Washington Times, the outrage at evil begins to recede. A president in trouble, he writes, can always try to change the subject and often succeeds. It's one of the most coveted perks of office, and Barack Obama knows it well. And he goes on to say, France led the way against evil, and Mr. Obama was soon content to turn his ire and outrage against the real terror of right-thinking folk, the Republicans in Washington. Bigotry, not terrorism, was all that irritated the president. The subject of what to do about the gathering storm bores him. Soon the aroma of the holier-than-thou began to waft across the landscape. 
Many times I've mentioned on this program a great book written in about 1997 called The Fourth Turning. I, I first heard about it. I was driving down the road one day, and I heard the author is being interviewed on a radio program. They have gone all the way back in the English-speaking world into the 1400s, so all the way back to the mother country, England, and they have tracked that about every 80 years or so that in Western culture, English-speaking culture primarily, we are faced with a great, great crisis. Usually it's a military crisis. And if you track this, and as you say, it doesn't happen 80 years exactly, but it happens, it can be 78 or it can be 83, but roughly every 80 years. And a turning is, is, is described as a 20-year period, usually generational. And they're able to show you how this works throughout history. So let's go back 80 years, 1935. What was going on in Europe? What was going on in Asia? You get the picture? Now, we're in, a, we're in an economic downturn, a long economic downturn, just as we were at the same time. Now we've got uh, the Russians coming to us saying, hey, we need to help each other fight these guys. Who did we fight World War II with? The Russians. So we're, we're right back to square one 80 years later. Now, if you go back 80 years before World War II, we had the Civil War in this country. If you go back roughly 80 years before that, you had the Revolutionary War in this country. You, you see how this all works out? So we are at that point right now in history where, if you've ever read the, the history of World War II, I think it was Charles Collingwood put together a great book. Think about the names Baldwin and Chamberlain. They were the two lightweights who were running England through that period, and they got England into a very, very deep mess and nearly destroyed their country because they were unwilling to challenge the evil that was rising. Well, we have that opportunity to finally nip this in the bud. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. Your phone call is coming up in a minute. 